in the arenas of Comera is the greatest gladiator to ever live, Lilith Hesperax. She's a long-standing character of the Jukari army and just such a badass. However, this is not that mini. I wanted to venture outside the standard stuff and found this beautiful mini by RTLW, Supreme Gladiatress Mavia. RTLW have a variety of high quality minis that I am desperate to paint, so you may see more of them in this channel, especially the Aspect Warriors GW just can't be asked to look at. Side note, this video is not sponsored by them, although I wouldn't say no to them, I just love the minis. Sponsor subliminal. Ooh, sneaky. As this is a minimal but important model, I wanted to get some more involved techniques to get some cool skin and armour effects. Let's get right into it. To get the colours how I want them, I start with a white prime. No zenithal, no slap chop, yeah that's how you know it's serious. Instead of doing all the base coats, then all the shades, then all the highlights, I'm going to go area by area, finishing each in turn, and I'm going to start with the skin. To get the super pale and unnatural look, I base coat with Ulthuan Grey. This is barely darker than a white, but just adds that pale cold grey, very bluish. As with any base coat, I water this down slightly and apply two coats to get a good coverage. Now I use a weird colour because I really want to push the effect of like bad health these people have. Death Guard Green is heavily watered down and then specifically applied to areas that would be in shade. This is apparently what the heavy metal painters do, so they keep the colour of the base coat accurate, rather than washing it all over which would darken the whole surface. It works kind of like a glaze, and this means you want thin layers. Too much paint will pull and create those tide marks, so move the paint where you want it, make sure to mop up any excess, and do a few layers if needed. Because I'm using a third party mini and I have my own custom cabal, I thought it'd be good to give this lady her own lore. In their long history, the Drukhari have been known to blink suns out of existence to be used in the webway. In the sub-dimension named Solnets, a stolen sun is housed and mined for energy. The Drukhari live in vast orbital palaces, while the ancient denizens scurry about in extra-dimensional caves underneath the surface of the sun. When the latest steward, Furevan Bea, arrived, it was business as usual. Keep the denizens in check, enslave where necessary, and ensure the realm keeps up its energy exports. Okay, that was fine for basic values, but I do need to shade the hard lines where creases or where another surface overlaps. I use scale colour violet in a similar manner, but this time I'm really careful to only put it in those areas I just mentioned. Here I'm just creating a line between surfaces, not really shading within each surface. At this point I'd just like to mention I also have a Patreon and a Coffee and an Instagram. All the links are down below. I really appreciate any support you can give me on any other platforms. Next I re-establish the base tone by going over the large surfaces with it. There has been some pooling where I wasn't careful enough so here I can fix it. Now I grab bold titanium white and highlight the highest parts and edges. I try and use this sparingly as I don't want it to be too bright, however I am going for this almost dead, kind of ghostly skin tones, so I need it to be white at the highest points. Next, the hair. I base this with Sons of Horus Green, as my other Drukhari have a cool grey hair tone and I wanted just a bit more colour in this while keeping it kind of desaturated. After the two thin coats of base toner down, I use the contrast glazing technique. I want the hair to get progressively lighter as it travels out away from the head, so what I do is take shyish purple and then thin it heavily with contrast medium. Then, as if I was glazing, I paint multiple passes, doing less area each time. The result is that the green is darker towards the top and contrast has settled more in the recesses, creating shading. Why purple to shade green, you ask? I don't know, I had it to hand and it seemed cool. The ancient Eldari native to this realm never made it easy for their subjugators. Mining operations were made extra treacherous by random attacks, and Furivan Bear wanted to put a stop to that. He descended to the caves with his incubi and tore through the wretches. That is, until they came across a ragged woman. I decided to use the same technique with Basilicanum Grey on the bottom end, shading without going as dark or saturated. I get some Sons of Horus Green and some Ulthuan Grey ready. Then I start by dry brushing just Sons of Horus Green onto the upper hair area. As I move down, I add in more grey to the highlight, 
getting the effect of the colour shifting more pale grey further down. I keep adding in more as I go until I get right to the bottom where I'm highlighting with pure Ulthuan grey. I also go back and do a bit of Ulthuan grey around the top where it would have caught the light. As the seasoned warriors struggled to keep up with her, one was slain with a single potent strike of a dagger. The feral Eldari stood over her prize as the remaining warriors retreated. For many cycles after that, the locals were empowered and the Kabbalite soldiers feared to police them, as the legend of the Hornet spread. It was said she could end any warrior with just a single sting. Okay, let's get the little clothing available on this lady. Most of her bodysuit parts will be black, but I base coat them with a 50-50 mix of black and burnt brown red. This is because I want them to be kind of leathery and warm looking. The whole vibe of my Drukari is that their uniforms are warm, vibrant colours and their skin is cold and dead. I break the process of finishing one surface entirely here, as I want to make sure the colours I've chosen work together. With a name like the Hornet, she of course has a black and yellow scheme. So I use game colour Sun Yellow on the parts I picked out for that colour. Next I use Black Templar Contrast Paint as a shade for the leather. I knew this wouldn't have a huge impact as it was quite dark already, but it was worth doing anyway. Then I watered down the burnt brown red to highlight those areas. Now to add some highlighting for the hard black elements on the mini. For the knives and black armour panels I highlighted with Eshin Grey. I don't worry about being too specific on this part, as I plan to do edge highlighting with kind of raggedy silver so it looks a bit damaged. Let's get on to that part. As always with the tedious edge highlighting, I get some paint on the brush then run the side of the brush along the edges and corners. On a lot of parts I did it in a kind of scratchy way so that it looked rough and damaged. In a few places I went over a few times just to make sure there was enough. But remember, if you do too much it'll look like it's just silver instead of damaged black, so go easy. Bea had learned a hard lesson and now bucked the trend that his predecessors had set. He decided to parlay with the Hornet and reward her skill rather than punish her crimes. He descended once again, this time with a white flag, showing humility that would have disgusted his peers. Now I want to shade the yellow parts, so I use game colour orange fire in the same method as before. I thin it substantially and paint it directly onto the areas that will be shaded. Again, some deeper areas require another coat or two to get it looking right. The gamble paid off and the Hornet became one of Archon Bear's inner circle and most feared generals. As with the skin, I want to get a solid definition between surfaces so I use Karaberg Crimson to make areas stand apart from each other. I then re-establish the base tone, painting it back onto any surface that needs it. Finally to highlight, and for this I use model colour Ice Yellow. I do the edges and the sticking out parts of the belt. After inducting the Hornet into the ranks of the Cabal of the Poisoned Sun, the merging between the Drukhari and the denizens of Solnitz proved fruitful. More skilled warriors revealed themselves and joined the effort, allowing the Cabal and the Cult of the Vicious Sting to prosper. Finally for the yellow, we need to mess it up a bit. I grab my Rhinox Hide and start edge highlighting again, putting it down in scratchy, rough, uneven patterns. Finally, on the larger areas, I go back with a little bit of silver to make it look scratched down to the base metal. I want the leather to look quite distressed too, so I start with a scratchy highlight with red leather, quite watered down. I do this in multiple passes, always using the scratchy marks. I apply this all over, then use basic skin tone on more selective areas. I focus on the edges and most upward facing areas. After this I realised the leather was looking a bit too brown and I'd need to darken it down a bit. I wanted to glaze it back down, but before this I added another layer of the scratchiness with bone white that would show through the glazes better. So I thinned down Black Templar again and glazed it over a couple of times until I was happy the leather would read as black. Finally I added more bone white as scratchy edge highlights. With the main stuff done, it was time for some touch-ups. 
There were a few areas the skin had got other paint on it, so I took my white and cleaned up those areas. I then felt the skin could do with just a slight bit more definition. I thinned down shyish purple with contrast medium again, and got to glazing it in any recesses and downward facing areas. This was done as a glaze, again moving onto another area, then going back round, adding more layers and more layers once the previous ones had dried. Then I moved on to the hair hooks and base coated them black. As these were small details I didn't bother with too much, just an edge highlight of silver. With the mini done, I put some grey sear on the base. I dry brushed it white and shaded with Drakenoff Nightshade before painting the marble effect on. The Hornet claims to have been born with her legend, and to this day none amongst the Drukhari know her previous name. So there we are, the Hornet leading a pack of her witches into battle. What do you think of this? It's actually quite satisfying spending a bit longer on a mini doing all these like manual painting techniques rather than the speed paint style things. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this or if you prefer the speed paints and maybe I'll paint another leader type unit in the future. Thanks for watching.